Good morning ladies and gents. So tonight's video for the unit review is going to be slightly different than it has been the last few weeks. So please do let me know down in the comments below if you enjoy this kind of unit review style video where I actually pit two different units up against each other, look at all their stats in depth and actually give you a judgment of which one I think is the better one. Let me know if you enjoy this kind of video because then I will actually look to put out more of these types of videos in combination with the standard unit review videos now this <laughs> this video is probably going to cause a little bit of discussion a little bit of debate and some of that probably will be heated because i know a lot of people will either like one of these units or the other and if i don't agree with one camp they're probably going to shout quite loud so if you have any comments or anything that you want to actually add to the discussion of this video make sure you put those down in the comments below as well but give me logical reasons why you don't agree with opinions or even if you do agree with opinions give me reasons why as well and let's get the debate and discussion going a little bit so tonight we're going to be looking at the monastic knights tier 5 cavalry against the winged hussars tier 5 cavalry and we're going to have a look and see actually which is going to be the best one to go for off the bat. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that sub button. I'm doing a video like this every single week, plus as well loads of other Conqueror's Blade content, so definitely you want to be around for the latest and the greatest Conqueror's Blade content. look at both the units in uh, detail to begin with and then we're going to go through and I'm going to show you a bit of gameplay from both as well while I still actually discuss the units. So I have both Monastic Knights and Winged Hussars at level 30. What I'm going to do is knock off all the Doctorates just to make sure that we are getting the correct stats when we are actually looking at these guys with no added bonuses from any of these Doctorates. The Doctorates and stuff I will go over in just a second though. So we're going to start off with the Monastic Knights. So Firstly, how to get the monastic knights? You need to actually get these guys with honor going down the uh, chivalric tree. So to get these guys, you need to go down both paths. You need to unlock all four units, and then eventually you will get the monastic knights right at the end of it. Quite a good unit. Quite a uh, devastating unit if used properly. They come with 16 guys in the unit level. Maximum level for them is level 30 and they cost you 330 leadership to take into battle. They have a very long charge on them. They've got very heavy armor. They resist flame, uh, uh, but they are fairly slow. Looking at their health, so you have just under 8,000 health and their speed is 6.5. They are, they're pretty good in terms of damage, but I find personally their, their speed lets them down somewhat, but this is just kind of, this is kind of what you pay for having that heavier armor. So their piercing armor penetration is 1600, slashing armor penetration is 1200. When they actually get into melee, they do start slashing with their lances rather than actually sticking it and stabbing someone with it. They will try and slash with it instead, which is where the slashing damage comes from. Piercing damage is all about their charge. Their charge is all piercing damage. Slashing damage is their sustained melee damage. Not the greatest of numbers, but <laughs> respectable. Their defense however is pretty good so you've got like pretty much the same defense across the board across piercing slashing and blunt which allows them to actually stay in that sustained when they stay in that sustained battle for a little bit longer than some other units now they come with the wedge formation which i personally find is by far the best formation for any kind of charge uh, attack unit they do really well out in the plains which are things like the field battles and stuff like that do really well. Don't do so well in siege battles in the urban areas, do okay in all of the other areas. Their only unit order is their charge as well. So once this charge has actually been used, you've got to obviously let this cool down before you can use it again. Looking at their veterancy bonuses, I'm going to go just switch onto my page for this so I can actually show you how I have built these guys going down the veterancy tree. So I have got these guys elited. 
So I've gone all the way down the top line, which eventually increases their charge damage. And then we've put in a load of extra points down the bottom for the last few kind of points we had into their defenses. Personally, I am of the mindset that this is meant to be quite a uh, uh, quite a shocking unit, quite a damage dealing unit. You're going to be wanting to do a more damage out of your charge rather than have them last a little bit longer in sustained melee. So I think personally you are going to be better building monastic knights like this and that focusing on their damage output off the charge and focusing on them actually doing that first big burst of damage rather than just kind of sitting in battle and trying to do a little bit of slashing damage which you saw back on the actual uh, page their slash damage in comparison to their pierce damage is a lot less So their stats at level 30 have gone up a little bit, the health has gone up a little bit, speed is still the same, uh, their damage has gone up a little bit as well and the defense has gone up a little bit. Again, really you want to be focusing on this piercing if you are building like that. So just a, a thousand piercing damage is pretty good for the monastic knights. Switching over to the winged hussars, now these guys a damn cool unit damn cool unit so looking at how to actually unlock these guys you need to go down the unit tree again however these are in the cavalry tree to get these guys you need to first get the quartiliers then the yeoman and then you can build towards the winged hussar so actually they're a lot quicker to get than the uh, monastic knights and looking at their stats they come with two extra people in the unit so they've got 18 in total the max level again is 30 and they actually cost 10 less leadership than the monastic knights only costing 320 points to actually bring into battle looking at their attributes and everything their health is going to be a bit lower all their armor and stuff is going to be a little bit lower than the uh, monastic knights because this is more of a attacking unit so these guys obviously have a little bit less health the leadership is a little bit less their speed is actually quicker their piercing and slashing damage is a lot greater though so the damage is kind of more kind of like rounded between the piercing and slashing with the monastic knights it was just all really about that piercing damage rather than the slashing damage here their piercing damage is pretty good for that initial charge and then they actually have a sword which they brandish in sustained melee which is where the slashing damage is coming from these guys have a far higher slashing damage than the monastic knights which means these guys are going to be better in sustained melee however their defense is what lets them down because of that increase in damage that increase of attack their defense has taken bit of a uh, bit of a knock on this one so especially the piercing defense and the blunt defense almost 200 points each lower than the monastic knights the slashing defense is only about 60 points lower than the monastic knights but the piercing and the blunt damage or defense even sorry is far far less than the monastic knights these guys unfortunately do not have a wedge formation either which is a real shame because that would i think really really like set this unit up if they had that wedge formation however you can kind of do it with a line formation by actually rotating that line around so instead of just having two horizontal lines you have two vertical lines headed towards the point you want to go into and kind of work it that way that does still work a little bit more difficult to set up than having a wedge formation but still it does just the job as well very good out on the planes again so for field battles fantastic unit again don't do so well in sieges and stuff and all the other areas are okay so their war lancers so their their lances are bigger than most pikes or lance units or cavalry however fortabrachios i can assure you have far greater 
lengths of pikes, so don't get caught out there. They are melee cavalry, so not only are they built to charge, they are built to actually go into sustained melee. They are pretty quick. You definitely notice the speed difference between these guys and the monastic knights. They are also flame resistant as well, so any flame units will have a bit of a tougher time actually trying to take these guys down. Going into their veteran C line then, so how I've actually built these guys. So with these guys, I've actually gone all the way down the bottom line. Uh, this <sighs> increases their damage, it gives them a little bit of extra defense, and it makes their charge uninterruptible. Although, word of warning, word to the wise, some units still somehow seem to be able to actually interrupt their charge. This is not a full, like, whatever they go plowing into isn't going to be able to stop them because there are still some units which can stop their charge, which is somewhat annoying, especially when you've gone all the way down this line to actually get this. It, it is a little bit annoying, but definitely the best line for it because it increases their movement speed. It gives them a little bit of defense, gives them a little bit of attack as well, and actually their charge damage increased by 5% on the top line. It's not great. Let's let's be honest. That's not great. The the big one really here is the charge cooldown by nine seconds. Once you get all three points in that, everything else really is you can you can do away with it. To be honest, going down this line and then picking up the last three on the top one when you get them actually maxed out. Looking at the stats at level thirty, so obviously the health has gone up, the damage has gone up, the the armor has gone up a little bit. The damage is uh, pretty high to begin with. To be honest. The speed has actually gone up almost an entire point. The health has increased by almost 3,000, which is quite big. Uh, the defences are still fairly low, though. So the defences, especially the blunt defence, is fairly low in comparison to the monastics. Damage, however, you can see is far greater than the monastic knights. So coming to kind of the toss-up between monastic knights and the winged hussars which is going to be the better one to get which is going to be the better one to actually aim for personally i enjoy the winged hussars a lot more than i do the monastic knights and i find the winged hussars are a much better unit to take into battle because they can actually sustain they can stay in sustained melee for a little bit longer than monastic knights they do a little bit more damage as well their charge damage is ridiculous i was pulling like 6k 7k charge like attacks when i was actually playing these guys earlier they seem to do just better overall than the monastic knights now the monastic knights are definitely worth unlocking i am not poo-pooing or naysaying the monastic knights in any way shape or form they are still a fantastic unit and still a definitely worthwhile unit especially in things like territory wars and stuff these guys do come into their own a little bit but i think especially if you are new to the game and you're looking at actually what units should i be unlocking right now what units should i be progressing towards i would say definitely the monastic knight firstly they are going to be a little bit cheaper a little bit quicker to actually unlock down that unit tree just having to unlock the uh, these small nodes going all the way down rather than the actual unit nodes to begin with on the chivalric tree and you actually you are also only having to spend 320 leadership instead of 330 leadership to bring these bad boys into battle which although 10 leadership does not sound like a lot it actually depending on what units you are bringing into battle can make the difference between actually picking a good unit and a bad unit to bring in so any kind of difference in leadership does set units apart as well obviously these guys come with two extra people as well the damage is better and actually if you learn to micromanage these guys and actually get their charge off do a little bit of fighting get straight back out rotate back round into the flank into the rear and actually hit the uh, bad boys bad boys the bad guys in the butt or the flank again with their charge these guys can pull off amazing amounts of damage and kills so personally i think you are going to be better off going towards the elite winged hussars to begin with especially in early days of your conqueror's blade adventures i have been playing show uh been playing 
I've been showing off gameplay footage whilst doing this video as well so that's probably kind of made up your mind as well of which way you want to go definitely definitely get both of them during your adventures I would say after you get the winged hussars definitely then start going towards probably the uh, the house rangers in the seasonal uh, challenges but the monastic knights on the unit tree pick up these boys first pick up these boys second on the unit tree you are not going to feel bad about actually plowing in a load of honor to get these monastic knights as well having both units is very useful especially once you start going into territory war battles where some houses do use double cavalry and these boys are going to be very beneficial to you early game thank you very much for watching folks i hope you've enjoyed this one so overall i would suggest going winged hussars however do you disagree with that do you agree with it let me know down in the comments below either way your thoughts on this video your thoughts on both the units plus anything that i may have missed or neglected to mention as well definitely mention that down below as well i hope you have all enjoyed watching this video and it's kind of given a bit of showcase to both of these units as always folks, if you have enjoyed it, please hit that sub button, hit that like button, share this video around and I hope to catch you out on the battlefield.